Hello everybody, welcome back. So in this uh, video, we're gonna be talking about the rest of the UI component. So let's get started. What I'm first gonna do is just create a regular text object. Uh, I'm gonna increase the width and the height and just decrease the size just so we can see it. And let's just make it bold. We're gonna add a component, go to UI, and there's gonna be all these. Button I covered, all these I covered. I'll leave uh, links up above and in the comments below if you want to check all these videos out i pretty much covered most of these we're going to go to effects because i haven't covered effects yet so effects it gives us these three outline position as uv1 and shadow so we're just going to go to the outline now outline as you can see it kind of bolded my text already so let's just make it white or let's make it a red so we could actually see it and let's increase the alpha okay so now what this outline does it actually creates as it, it says an outline but if you if you uh increase it dramatically as you can see it it makes two text objects or it makes two uh like shadows effects so for an outline all you have to do is pretty much just increase it a little bit and you get that outline and then you could use the graphic alpha or not depending if you want to so the graphic graphic alpha would pretty much be uh, your text alpha like click this so right now I'm using graphic alpha, but if I turn it off, as you can see, it's not using the text alpha, so it will match it. Anyways, that would pretty much be it for the outline. Let's increase this alpha again. And now there's also, on the effects section, there's also position as UV1. Now I, I had to look this one up because I wasn't exactly sure what that was. So it says this adds a simple position as UV1 effect to text and image graphics, which didn't really make too much sense to me. So I went online and I looked it up. And uh, what I pretty much was able to find was that the position as UV1 component, it allows you to change the UV channel that the canvas renders on. This is used if you want to create a custom shader that utilizes baked light maps. But yeah, so it's used for custom shaders and for baked, what's it called, light maps. So that's what that pretty much is. So I'll probably make a video about this later when I make uh, custom shaders so we could see what this exactly does. Uh, but we're gonna keep moving on. We're gonna go to effects again and to shadow. Shadow pretty much works uh, the same as, um, as what was it, um, as the outline. The only difference is that it doesn't create two objects. It's just one single one. So you could just, you know, increase it. I usually just increase it by uh, two and negative two or, you know, one and a half, 1.5 minus 1.5. But you could also have this going upwards instead of your shadow. Just depends on how you like your shadows looking. And then of course you could use the graphic alpha as well as the outline. So we're gonna keep moving on. Again, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. I know I'm moving kind of fast, but hopefully this way we cover more things, you know, more quickly. So for this uh, mask, I got to create an image and this image, I'm just going to make it 200 width and move it over. So you'll be able to see the ends down. And then um, I'm going to add the mask. So I'll go to UI then down to mask and then I could show the graphic mask or the mask graphic which would be this white image or I could turn it off so for now I'm going to turn it off one thing you do got to make sure is that you um or actually yeah that you got to make sure is that you add whatever object you want to mask so if you don't know what mask is is if an object is masked it is pretty much cut off so where this let's say where this line is right here where the n is the n would be cut off and the rest of the word you would be able to see it so let's drag this text object into the image slot because it has the mask component so we'll just drop it and as you can see the end got kind of cut off and then i could just you know mess around with that and you can see it gets cut off and the text only stays within that box so uh and then right here where it's maskable as you can see if i uncheck this it will not be able to get masked so uh there's that and you could also turn off the mask graphics so the white box and it will still work if i move the text you can see it still work and yeah that's pretty much it for the mask now if i remove this the red mask 2d so this one right here the rect mask 2d it's pretty much the same thing the only difference is that you could change how you want it to be cut off so let's say let me actually move this text over so as you can see we can't see new no more but 
if we go over here to the left padding, we could actually adjust it so we could actually see where or the letters before it gets cut off and you could adjust how you want the mask to be. So as you can see, and you could even do it, let's say from the bottom, where we at? Yeah, so I think it's negative, no, positive. So as you can see, you could even do it from the bottom or from the, the top. So as you can see, you could cut it off either way. And then uh, one more thing I wanted to show you was the softness. So softness will like, as you can see, it will, wherever it's cutting off, it will fade your, your letters. So if I increase this, you can see it fades them. Once it gets close to the, to the actual mask, so I could have just, you know, a little bit of it. And as soon as it gets close to it, you can start seeing it fades. And you can even have less than that, so 10. So you could barely see it right here fading. And you could also do it for the Y. And uh, yeah, that's that for the rec mask tooting. Like I said, just leave me a comment if it's too fast. If, if you have a question, just let me do know down below. Now I'm gonna go on this text and I'm gonna add this next one, which is selectable. Now, if you see me skipping all these, uh, like the, the scroll bar and the scroll rack, the raw image, that is because I made videos on this before. So check the comments below. I will try to post all of them if I do not forget. If I do, leave me a comment and I'll, to remind me and I'll post them as soon as I see the comment and I have time. And uh, so we're gonna go to selectable. Now selectable, it looks like a button component almost. So if we, let's say go to button. And as you can see, there's this button and it almost looks exactly the same. The only difference between the selectable and the button is that this on click event. So uh, if we delete this, we do not have an on click event here. But anyways, we could have changed, of course, the color. So it, it's on black. So I'm not going to change the color right now, the normal color, but I will change. Let's actually add this to black. So let's just add black. And then when it is, let's see, when we highlight it, it's going to be yellow. And press, we'll leave it like that. Select it, we'll put it back. To, well, actually, we'll just leave it as blue, just so you can see. And uh, yeah. And you could even disable the interactability of this selectable component. So now, as you can see, our normal color is black. If I go over it, it's gonna turn yellow. If I uh, press it, it will turn gray before turning blue. So if I hold it down, press, it's gray. And if I let go, turn blue. And then if I disable it, it'll just turn gray and uh, it's supposed to be faded. So it's supposed to be faded like that. But yeah, anyways, uh, that's that for the selectable. And let's see what else I got. Okay, this video is not too long, but and it looks like, yeah, we're pretty much done for the UI. So let me see how much time we got left. Okay, well, I'm going to cut it here. So uh, that's pretty much it for the UI. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see a certain video, let me know as well. In the next video, I'm pretty sure I covered video player, but I will double check. And then um, I'm not sure if we're going to cover the XR. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see uh, this XR component section. If not, we will make our, we'll check what this new script section is real quick. Pretty well, I'll just explain it real quick. You just go, if you go to new script, you could actually name um, go to script. You could actually name the script you want, a new script you want. And then you just create an ad and it creates a new script. And that script will also be added to this little section right here, which is all the scripts in this project. So this is all the scripts that I have currently in my project. And yeah, that's pretty much it. In the next video, I'm not sure where we're going. We might. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see either, let's see, we could either, so we could either, I could either explain what all these are. Um, most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but uh, I could also explain all these. So if you want to learn about this sub menu, just, co just comment sub menu real quick. If you want to learn about this top menu and what all these do, comment that real quick. And if you just want to start scripting and making games just let me know comment script or or make games or something let me know what you guys want to see in the next video if not i'll come up with something uh thank you to all my subscribers especially for hanging in there with me i know i haven't been posting as often as i used to it's just been hectic at work and school but i will try to get better at it and i'll try to post more so just stick with this channel uh, especially if you want to learn about unity and once again, thank you.